true or false. If you can play the flute, you can play the piccolo. For a long time, I thought that was true, um, but when I went to college, I realized that the two instruments are actually completely different. <laughs> um, so do me a favor right now and rate your comfort level on the piccolo from one to 10, even if you're a professional flutist. I usually play principal flute in orchestra, and even with that level of expertise on the flute, for years my um, comfort level with piccolo was about negative 100. <laughs> so the moral of the story is just because you can play the flute doesn't necessarily mean that you can play the piccolo. So hi, I'm Katie Velasquez. I'm one of the founders of Band Director's Survival Guide, and I'm a pro professional flutist too. Um, one of our missions at Band Director's Survival Guide is to connect educators with top-level performers and teachers, and today is no different. Today we have um, Lily Josephsberg, and she has been playing piccolo since she was in middle school, and I've known her since um, since undergrad, we went to the same school together, Boston University, and uh, she went on to get two piccolo degrees from Peabody Conservatory, and she is known as the piccolo goddess. Um, she's been heard playing piccolo with the New York Philharmonic, um, Baltimore Symphony, Kansas City Symphony, many others. Literally before this pandemic, she was a traveling piccolo player going to every orchestra playing. <laughs> we all know her as the go-to piccolo player. Um, so. I want you guys out there to share this interview with anyone who is interested in the piccolo or might be auditioning on the piccolo for Allstate or any flute players who are trying to get more comfortable with piccolo. Um, and give us a like or share this, like I said. Um, we are Band Directors Survival Guide. You can find us on Facebook on our group or our page. Um, we also have the same handle on Instagram, Band Directors Survival Guide. And you can check out our website. We'll talk a little bit more about what Lily is offering right now to students who are interested in playing the piccolo more seriously. Um, so basically, I hope you enjoy this interview. It was so fun for me. Lily is one of my closest friends. Um, so I'll be back at the end to tell you a little bit more about how you can work with Lily too. All right. All right, hi everyone. This is Lily Josephsberg. We're super happy that she's here to share her knowledge of the piccolo with us. And she's gonna be leading our BDSG piccolo advancement program. So I can't wait to share all of her knowledge with you. Thanks for being here, Lily. Thanks so much for having me, Katie. Yay. All right, so can you just tell us a little bit about the piccolo, how you got into doing it? Like any just opening thoughts on piccolo? Yeah, sure. So I started the piccolo when I was in seventh grade. Um, I My parents rented me one and I just, I, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that it was very hard at first, but um, I uh, loved playing it in band and got was lucky enough to play it in high school all the way through. I was a piccolo player and just the more I played it and the more I got used to the instrument, it just came naturally and I loved being able to soar above all the other instruments in band and orchestra and loved just like really being the powerhouse of the ensemble and so I think having that adrenaline rush really got me um, into it and majoring in college and in masters and um, ever since then it's been a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Yeah, so Lily actually has a degree in piccolo performance. Can you just talk like a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, at Peabody Conservatory, which is in Baltimore, Maryland, it's the only program in the entire US um, where you can major in piccolo. And I studied with the piccoloist of the Baltimore Symphony for three years there, where I basically, it was the same kind of um, program as a regular flute masters, except I just only played piccolo in ensembles and in my lessons. And then there was a piccolo studio class. Um, there's tons of solo repertoire and excerpts for the piccolo. So there's lots to do. Wow, it's totally like, that's all you were doing. That's so awesome because for me at least, I mean, the question I asked at the beginning is, are the flute and the piccolo the same? <laughs> Which me in high school was like, 
Yeah, they're the same, right? <laughs> it's just like yeah. same fingering, same. It's like a little tube that you blow on. Um, and what I learned in college is that they're not the same at all. And the saying actually goes from like our teachers. Like they're exactly the same, except they're like completely different. <laughs> so yeah, um, exactly. That's a very good way of describing it. I mean, I feel like there are so many small differences. I mean, overall, you do have to be a flute player first, I think. Um, I don't I don't recommend starting on the piccolo, but um, you'll find when you get like more into playing with different fingerings and um, all the different pieces that it has such a different timbre of color um, and it has um, so many different things you can do with the sound, especially that um, would be different from flute. Okay, so what's like, What's the main difference between being the piccolo player in an orchestra or a band and then being like the flute player? What's the difference? Well, I think with the piccolo, you're the only one usually. So you're going to be able to be heard. A lot, lots of band pieces are just are very loud and you, you think that the brass is going to cover you up, but no, you can definitely be heard over everyone. So if you have to have the personality to really want to shine and I think that you have to have a lot of like being able to own your own part. So if you don't like just playing in the section of the, of the flute section and you want to have your own part and your own uh, sometimes even solos, um, then I think piccolo would be a great fit. Um, so yeah. yeah, totally. I am always like so afraid of the piccolo section, <laughs> so just like being in the flute section. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So let me ask you a question here. Um, so how would you, I guess, like teach the piccolo online? Um, because teaching online is difficult in general. Um, and how would you take like this really specialty instrument and teach it online so that students can get like a great experience out of um, an instrument that they might not normally be like exposed to in high school? Right. Um, well, I think in my classes, I have a very strict um, regiment for my practice schedule. So I definitely would want to go over my warm up routines and my fingering cheat sheets and any kind of audition day prep. I know everyone loves to take all of the all state bands and region band auditions. So I've done many, many of those. And so I'd love to teach more about all the excerpts for those classes. And then also, really be able to have a discussion about all the fears and insecurities with the instrument, because I think that's so important to address with people who want to get familiar with piccolo, but just don't know how to. And so a lot will just be kind of also talking and being that I'll be that mentor for the kids who um, have that interest. Totally. Yeah. And so there's some students out there that do their complete all state audition on piccolo. And I was always amazed that students like wanted to play the pickle that much in high school. But I mean, Lily is one of those who played all through high school and middle school, which is amazing. That's why she knows so much. Um, cool. All right. So let's go on to the next question. So in terms of like, so students auditioning for all state and all region and all that stuff, can you just talk about your audition experience? Like what have you kind of learned um, when you've been auditioning that you think you could help the students learn to? Yeah, so I think the most important thing to talk about would be nerves, um, how to not have that sound change when you're picking up the instrument. So what you really want to be able to do, I've learned, is just have all the preparation beforehand and not have any worries on the audition day. You want to kind of just present what you've, what you've been learning all those weeks beforehand. Um, so when you're in the audition, a lot of times you just kind of black out and you don't know what's happening. And I want to teach really how to be able to be completely focused in the audition room so that there's no, any other kind of distractions don't defer you from what you actually want to present. Um, and I have um, taken like at least 20 professional auditions um, for orchestras throughout my career. So I have a pretty good idea of how I like to prepare week by week and each week it kind of changes so that gradually as you get closer to the audition date 
it gets a little bit more detail oriented and less um, less like broader knowledge about the pieces or whatever. So really getting down to the nitty gritty is something that is extremely important and having an idea about every single note, every single phrase, um, we'll cover all of that. Totally. Ooh, that's so exciting. I'm going to have to join her piccolo class too. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, my next question is, I guess, so what do you think that students taking online classes now, because a lot of students are in online learning. Um, the schools here in Texas are at least in online learning until September. Um, and our whole BDSG thing <laughs> is fully online forever. Like this is our platform so we can reach more people who are not only in our geographical location. Right. Yeah. So like, what do you think online students are in need of right now? And like, what would you have in your course that, um, that would like, give whatever they need to them. Right. Um, well, I know this is such a strange time to be teaching, especially, I mean, it's such a hands-on thing usually when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And so being so far apart, I think the most important thing that students need to um, be able to do is self-learning. So I think um, if, if I could give like all of the kinds of recordings that I usually listen to and then all of the kind of resources that I use when I'm doing my own practicing that can really help them when they're just on their own. Um, I know I can't hear necessarily how great of a sound they're going to have. I'm, I mean, through zoom, you can only hear so much and it's pretty good though. Um, and you can't see like up close and personal, like exactly the fingerings, but there's plenty of other things that you can help with um, in terms of just being there, having that weekly like constant mentorship is so important, especially when you're beginning, um, just to keep like the discipline and keep the person momentum going, I think is super important. And um, I have my, all of my own like practice charts um, that I can show any kind of piccolo beginner. So cool. I'd be excited to see that. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. I am so excited that high school students might have the opportunity to work with you. Um, I wish that I could go to a piccolo class <laughs> when I was in high school. I just like they didn't have that. Um, right. So registration is open now for Lily's class, and we'll be talking about her more on our pages, our socials, our <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, all, we have our website, it, all of it's called Band Director Survival Guide, so you guys can just go there, and then Lily, do you have just like any closing thoughts on piccolo, or people like maybe who are not sure if they should do flute or, or piccolo audition, just any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean... This instrument is not easy. You know, it took me a while to really get used to it. So my biggest like advice for everybody is just to be patient and to like, um, I want to make sure that, ex that the experience is like rewarding. It's gonna be challenging, but also fun for everybody. And I, I have been through all of the ups and downs with the instrument. And so I would just love to share um, all of my knowledge for the most efficient ways of getting through and conquering the piccolo. Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely joining your class. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Lily, for sharing a little bit with us. And yeah, everyone stay tuned on our socials for more about Lily and how to join her class. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Bye. Bye. All right, well, I hope you enjoy that interview with Lily Josephsberg. She's been one of the most inspiring piccolo players since I've known her, and uh, she really is the person I go to whenever I have questions on piccolo. Um, so if you liked this interview, please share it with someone who you think might benefit from this information. When I was in high school, this is probably the one thing I wish I had, but I just didn't even know about. Um, I wish I knew that there was a specialized way to learn the piccolo to go about learning it. Um, and Lily has all of that knowledge. So please share this interview with um, someone, a student or a friend who might benefit from it. Um, and you can find out more about us, Band Director's Survival Guide, um, on our website of the same name. 
and on our Facebook group page and Instagram and YouTube, <laughs> all by the exact same name, Band Directors Survival Guide. Um, and remember, you can sign up to work with Lily in a 12-week program um, on the Allstate Etudes if you are a student who's auditioning on Piccolo for Allstate. You can check that out on bandrectorssurvivalguide.com. And uh, Lily will be in the group, and you can always post your Piccolo questions if you have them. So thanks again for watching. See you next time.